what I'll be talking about today is uh, blueprints, oh. specifications, kind of familiarizing you guys with some of the paperwork, the document side of things, and I'll show you how we lay it out. I, I don't need to be on site to, sh to show you guys layout. I can just go off the blueprints and tell you wh where we start from and what to watch out for uh, as you're laying out. Okay, so I got a bunch of stuff open here. And we're going to go over that in this stream. Will Cash brings up a good point here at the beginning of the stream. You know, he says some some foreman will teach, uh, some will not. Some say just watch and learn, right? Yeah. So I like most of the guys that I I worked with were like that. Yeah, just watch and learn, right? So uh, it's kind of hard to understand what they're doing, okay? Because you're not uh, if they're not if they're not like going over the actual document with you and showing you, okay? This is what what we're going from okay this this on the drawing is this and we're and we're gonna lay out this wall we're gonna start here work our way out this way blah 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 it's just it's just like what what you know what are you supposed to learn by just watching is is gonna be very limited when it comes to layout okay uh, myself i went into like the job shack every break like coffee break lunch break and i went to the blueprints and i just started looking at them only one time did i get into trouble for doing that Okay, one time uh, uh, for some guy, like a foreman come in or whatever, what are you doing looking at the prints? Who are you or, or whatever. That, or school, yeah. School too, guys. Yeah, school also. Yes, you're right. Uh, Sergeant Joe Smith, you're right. School, uh, really, actually, I, I went to school later on in my career. And so what, what uh, it was interesting because I already, I knew so much before I went to school that when I went to school, it nicely wrapped it all up for me. Okay, I was able. I actually understood everything they were talking about, very good. Okay, and I, and I scored perfect in all my schooling uh, because I went like after the fact. You know what I'm saying? And he was making blueprints by 19. Yeah. So when I was like in uh, in in high school, I went to a technical high school. Uh, we were learning drawings and diagrams, but I was I was mainly in like uh, doing electrical schematics and working in labs, uh, doing like a like circuit, circuit boards and stuff like that, okay? Um, so uh, we did, I was taking like a drafting course, which was interesting, but we only did like houses and stuff, okay? So I did know some stuff, you know, but I also started in the trades, I was 15. So I, you know, I, I had, I was building and learning all at the same time. And then when I was in my, uh, God, I would have been 30 maybe. I went back to get my CET and started learning more into the contract documents and like getting into specifications and all that, right? And um, it really helped. But before I did that, I was already... Um, oh, no, sorry. I'm lying. Actually, no. And then my first job out of there, actually, uh, working for a big company, I, um, I really started diving into specifications and learning those in great detail. And they're actually really simple. They're not, they're just, they're not, they shouldn't be intimidated by specifications. They're actually very simple and straightforward, okay? If you just, if you know some simple rules about it, really easy stuff. When I price my walls, it's, the layout's included. Um, so I'm, I'm always, uh, like, it's all included, right? So I'll do the layout, framing, it's all, just all included. Um, now, if there's some situations where I will go ahead and I'll do layout for um, uh, like underground services, okay? That way they're gonna put their holes and their pipes and their conduits in the right spot. And that really helps uh, the whole job and um, makes your job easier for sure. But after they go in and they cut all the, 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 the concrete and stuff like that, your lines could disappear. Uh, so yeah, you're talking high rise. Okay, so let's see here. So when I was, um, I just couldn't see because there was something in the way. So I need to look. So it makes me think about two dollars and fifteen buck, two fifteen a linear foot, seventy. So two seventy five, sixty. Still too cheap. Uh, oh yeah, no, that's way too cheap. Um, um, yeah, no, you should be going minimum. I would say. For a high rise Canadian dollars, I I'm really, uh, I really don't wouldn't want you to go below five bucks, uh, but I do know that like I think there's like a like four fifty. I've heard it, people going as low. I would I wouldn't. I'd be like six fifty, uh, six fifty a linear foot for high rises. Okay, like that's where it starts, 
and then it, and it'll get bigger from there. And the reason why with, with high rises, guys, hey, what's up, Lewis, my man, tech for your needs, my boy. Yo, check it out. I got a new setup. I'm going to get back to that high rise thing in one second. Yo, check it out, guys. So I've made some rearrangements on here and I got the I got a new overhead shot. I wanted to kind of show you guys. So this is for like doing products and other stuff. So for example, but anyway, so for high rises, guys, uh, 650 a linear foot minimum. And the, and the reason is, man, it's not worth it. Like if you're going to go any lower, you're just you're just you're just not going to make that much money. It's not going to be worth it. And they, because what happens with that crap is they, um, they, um, change. Okay. So you, you're going three and five eighths to two and a half to inch and five eighths. Uh, you know what I mean? Six inch. Okay. You got a yeah, plumbing wall, like a little bit of six inch. And then you got three and five, two and a half inch and five. Like you're switching around and around and it's crazy. And I know, they're like, what, 10 feet ceilings, uh, you know, if it's concrete, right? And then you got your drop ceilings that come in after and uh, for the, for, you know, for the duct work and all that, okay? Uh, but yeah, it's just, it's crazy, man. Like never, we got to stop selling ourselves short and we got to stop undercutting each other, guys. Uh, the, the, whole, the whole point is to get paid. Like we're, we, we do good work. We, we, put our, we put our health and our lives at risk every time we go to work. So charge for it. Okay, just charge. Who cares? Charge more and more and more and more. And it, it's no excuse that nowadays the jobs are costing like uh, like I say, the ratio from labor to materials is like almost reversed. So when, back in the day, it used to be thirty percent uh, materials, seventy percent labor. Now it's thirty percent labor, seventy percent materials. That's ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like. Because the wages haven't really gone up a lot in the trades. Like, it's just kind of been, this, like, you know, like, it, you've got to really, like, like claw your way out to get more money. It's just crazy. Like, it's just, it's such a, such a, just, ah, oh, it's just crazy, right? But anyway, so when it comes to documentation, there's so many different documents. Um, but between Canada and the United States... So between Canada and the United States, the contracts are pretty much the same. They, they, we go to different places to get them here in Canada. We go to uh, Construction Documents Canada, CDC. In the United States, it's uh, the AIA, right? The, uh, uh, I, what is it? I can't remember what it's short for. Uh, Archi architectural and something and whatever, Associates. Um, but yeah, they have, uh, this is the four common construction contracts you need to understand. And I'm just going to quickly go over them because this isn't what the stream is really about. But it's going to it's going to give you an idea of how your jobs are run okay guys because this dictates your project delivery right so uh like a stipulated price contract that's your lump sum most most tr most used uh like traditional design bid build scenario okay stipulated price contract okay so it's like one price for everything okay um and then your cost plus Right, so that would be um, like yeah, you're, exactly what it says, cost plus. So your cost to get it plus your profits and all and whatever added in. Okay, yo, shout out at Team Smoke, what's up, man? Yeah, so cost plus, right? This is just what it says. Uh, design bid build contract. Okay, so uh, there's also like um, contract, like there's contract management as well, which it what the contract management does is. Um, it manages the, the 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 construction over the like like the 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 construction manager will hold the contracts right or hold on am I backwards on that it's not a big deal it's not a big deal for you guys at this point anyways but yeah and then uh, so design build is a is a construction company that will ha will handle the designing and the building okay and hold the contracts okay um, and then IPD is a new a new type of contract where they um, um, all work together basically, okay, and they profit share at the end. It's 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 actually really interesting, really neat. If you ever worked on an IPD uh, job, you will know you're working on one for sure. But, but yeah, just to kind of give you an idea of some of the different contracts, um, there's a lot of information out there, guys. If you know what you're asking for, so it, there's one institution called Construction Specifications Institute that I I actually studied with a lot. They have a lot of good stuff going on there. Um, this stuff isn't important. I just kind of want to quickly go over it before we uh, uh, get into the drawings, but 
I guess that's this stuff isn't that important. In Canada here, look at all these different contracts, okay? Um, there's uh, there's your CCDC2, the most standard, okay, stipulated price contract. Um, look at that. So master agreement between owner and contractor, master agreement between owner and contractor, cost plus contract, uh, unit price, unit price. Uh, so piece workers, subcontractors will work in, work in these types of contracts, okay? Um, uh, even a subcontractor could work under stipulated price as well, cost plus, depending on what you're doing, okay? Uh, there you go, construction management contract for services and construction, right? 5A, 5B, uh, contractor qualification statement, project financial information, design build, stipulated price. Uh, but yeah, you can see all this. There'll be stat deck in here somewhere, and civil works contract, all different stuff. So there's standard documents. The, and the kind of basically what I'm trying to get to here is there's standardized um, uh, specifications as well called I don't have anything up here do I master format let me just quickly show you master oh. <clears throat> so yeah master format basically what it does is it divides all of our all of our trades into divisions right and that would be your project manuals so in the project manual you go to your division and you look and it'll give you certain rules and uh, like specify products and certain like um like uh, type like the materials like actual material specifications that they need okay it's uh it's it's pretty straightforward stuff okay it's just yeah we're gonna go over that more when we do our materials uh materials live stream pretty soon here that would probably be my next one i thought i had something else up on that and i also have a glossary of terms some other other uh information here that's available guys so if you want any of this stuff uh give me an email i'll send it to you um, but yeah, look at this. So there, this is a, a glossary of terminology that if anyone, anyone wants, let me know, email me, Chris at Construction Cronies. I'll send you to you. I'll send you these documents to you guys. But yeah, you can see here, let me blow it up. There we go. But yeah, it just gives you feasibility study, addendums, what an addendum is, right? That's a change to, uh, or an answer to a uh, RFI or a change order or design change. Oh, Arkansas. Oh, I would definitely go there. Damn, son. Yeah, CSI, CSI master format, right? The CSI master format is a system of numbers and titles for organizing construction information into a regular standard order uh, or sequence. By establishing a master list of titles and numbers, master format promotes standardization and thereby facilitates the retrieval of information and improves construction communication. It, it provides a uniform system for organizing information in project manuals, uh, for organizing project cost data, and for filing product information and other technical data, right? Awesome. So I just kind of wanted to kind of get, get over that a little bit. So if we go jump now and um, division zero and division one are basically like, uh, you know, general requirements uh, as a sense. Texas, eh? Tennessee? OG, oh, what's up, brother? Good to see you, man. Right on, man. But you could get an idea. Section 01009, national accounts, okay? Part 1. So section 1.1, subsection point 0.1, right? So 1.1 is point 0.1. Point one, and then you got 1 or whatever, right? Uh, but it gives you an idea of how it's organized, okay? Summary of work, right? So uh, 01010, uh, summary of work. So this will give you the information, um, summary of the, of, the, of the work to be done, okay? Uh, it's, it, it'll tell you things like your safety requirements, submittals that are required. Um, and each division will have, it might have submittals. And this is where you find out where you need to, add, if you need to get shop drawings done or um, anything like that, th this is what, will tell you that is the specifications, okay? That it's not on the drawings, it's on the specifications, okay? So I actually, I always hit the specifications before the drawings, 
uh, and I'll just familiarize myself with uh, my divisions, which was metals, thermal moisture protection, drywall, and even finishes. Okay, um, that's where I'll, that, those are the divisions that I'll look into. Um, I like to check out uh, other some other divisions that are related to mine, but uh, you know, take it one one time, one thing at a time, right? But yeah, I didn't tell you about coordination requirements, all this stuff. Okay, uh, it, it's good stuff. Clean, look, it's cleaning, fastenings, whatever. Uh, measurement and payment, all of that stuff. Good stuff. Look at that. So progress claim, submission summary. But uh, great, eh? Like it's all broken down into division, right? So look at that. Actually, this tells you right here. So most contracts will will break it all down into divisions, okay? Big ones. So uh, you got division two, site work, okay? So you got your dewatering, road work, uh, site cut and fill, building excavation and fill, uh, rock removal by blasting, precast concrete, retaining walls, piles, big one, blah, 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 right? You go, you keep going down. Uh, there you go. So concrete, division three, division four, masonry, division five is metals, division six is carpentry, division seven, thermal moisture protection, uh, division eight, doors and windows, um, division nine, finishes, uh, uh, like drywall is in uh, division nine, okay? So uh, 09250, division nine is, is, those are all divisions that are reserved for those specifications, okay? And uh, going down and down to each trade. So that's how, that's how that works. Uh, all right, look, no, we don't want Adobe. All right, so if we look at, let's just take out this last job that I did, okay? Let me just open it up widescreen, close that, and let's take a look. So if we want to get into layout and, and understanding blueprints, this is where we go. So when you're looking at blueprints, guys, this is, um, a lot of the information that you're going to want is down here at this bottom, uh, right-hand bottom corner, Okay. Uh, cover page, project info, you see right here, you got your the name of the job and the address and all this crap. Uh, but if we go in down, let's see here, what do we got here? You got your equipment and safety plan. Where, I, I swear to God that this is, uh, I just wanna make sure, cause this is really low. So this is your equipment, okay? And uh, when you're doing like a restaurant or something with equipment, this is good to know because um, you're, you're going to have dimensions in here. And uh, sometimes you want to double check to make sure certain things are going to fit. Okay. Uh, if you, or like say there's a measurement missing or something, but it tells you right here, right? So your, your, your fridge, your pan, grill, blah, 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 right? Freezer, freezer. All right. So 36 inch shelf, 36 inch shelf, 36 inch shelf. So you can tell there's a little bit of space in some areas, like between the freezer and the shelf here. And then the, this other freezer, this looks like there's a little bit of space to move there. But sometimes like, look right here, everything is tight, tight. Okay, you got a uh, you got a, like a, a prep kit table or sink here, uh, dishwasher, thirty six inch shelf, and then there's a shelf above. This is tight, tight, tight to this wall. So you might want to just check to make sure that this whole thing will fit. Okay, that's all. Make sure that you got your your room for your thirty six inch shelf and your thing. So you just find the piece of equipment down on the list, and it should give you a dimension, right? But yeah. Yeah, there, look, see 81 by 34, 38 by 34, whatever, right? So anytime you're doing stuff with lots of equipment, there's there's stuff in there. But yeah, like right inside these builds here, okay, that's where it gets really, really tight. So the architect is saying come out 17.1 from this wall. Well, guess what? Go 17.2, <laughs> you know, go an extra inch. Oh, that'd be sick. Uh, Sergeant Joe Smith, that would be sick, man. Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to go to the passport office and get my passport and we'll talk because uh, I might have, I just, I, it's funny, like I'm, I'm actually getting jobs, but they're not in Canada and I can't leave Canada right now. So I'm going to go get my goddamn password, passport done. And uh, that's that, like I, that's probably, you know, my main, my number one thing I should do right now. 
Right? Last year was so busy. I was going to do it last year. I just kind of neglected it. So I got to go get it done. Um, yeah, what do we got here? So door schedule. Uh, as well, we're, as framers, we're always going to need to know the door schedule. Um, right on. So e, e is probably an exterior door, which is going to be done. Uh, we're, but we want these interior doors, 104, 105, 102, right? Uh, yeah, these are exterior. But uh, two eight by 7 so 3 by 7s And you got your, yeah, solid core. Metal, P4, so that's your paint, right? Uh, room number, so 104, so 104. Okay, excellent. Uh, but yeah, you got your thir three foot two door. Some doors are, yeah, you gotta watch the sizes of, of those doors. They're not always gonna be on the actual uh, drawings, but uh, look at that. So section jam, swing at door, serving line, okay? When you're uh, looking at a drawing and you see this, this, sorry, See these squiggly lines here like that, okay? That just means the these these are the ends and this is just uh, squeezing it closer together, okay? It's like uh, separating a distance is what that does, okay? Yeah, I know your borders are, I, I you know what? I should take, I, I have so many, I have thought of that so many times, Sergeant Joe Smith, I'm like, Man, they're letting in Mexicans. Why won't they let me in? <laughs> I'm like, I should go. I should just go. <laughs> they're letting in all kinds of people. I, what I do is just throw my ID out like a mile away and uh, let me in. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, fly to Mexico and then cross. But Mexicans are flying here to cross down too. So I just got to find out. Actually, I already know where they're crossing. I just got to go down to Roxham Road and link up with a bunch of Mexicans and come across. That's all I gotta do. <laughs> yeah, there's a place in Quebec, uh, Roxham Road. They're crossing there. They're, they're, they're flying to Canada and then, and, then, and then also crossing from Canada to the, on the north side too, eh? But uh, yeah, so uh, some more important things to, to know about drawings. Let me just to take this off for a second. So your dimensions are gonna be inside of what we call hash marks. So these little, little dash marks are your hash marks, okay? They're gonna tell you where the numbers are coming from. So between there and there, the, this edge and this edge, an inch and three quarter, uh, right? inch and three quarter and then uh, these are like a double sliding door or something or no this is like a gate right like a server gate that's what that is inch of uh, one foot eight each all right what do we got here part so we got partition legend so partitions are walls okay guys just so you know so so partitions are interior uh, walls it's simple as that. So um, uh, exterior walls. There's exterior walls and partitions. Partitions are just inside walls. Okay. Excuse me. And here, this is this is a weird way to label them. Okay, like A, B, C, D. That that is a weird way to label them. Usually it's uh, not like that, but <clears throat> it's no big deal. And you're gonna show show you the symbol. So you can see what this one here has got something inside it. So partition to be constructed of three and five eighths, <clears throat> excuse me, 92 millimeter steel studs on, on 16 inch center. If it doesn't say on 16 inch center or on two foot center or on one foot center, it's always 16 inch center. Yeah, we get some, well, some guns. Yeah, we do get guns here. Um, but not like you guys have in the, in the United States though. No, uh, mostly like, right. We got rifles and, uh, and, um, like, I don't, I don't even think handguns are legal here. Honestly, I, you have to have a special license to have a handgun here. Um, but yeah, no, no semi-automatic weapons, no handguns, just like rifles, like hunting rifles basically. Right. But yeah, there's guns. There's definitely guns, <laughs> but yeah, there is a lot of guns. Yeah. Trust me. There's, there are still a lot of them. <laughs> But just not, they're not like crazy weird guns. Like you, like, you know, you guys are in the States, I look and I'm like, holy shit, like, 
You got all these kinds of guns. It's crazy, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. But yeah, this this will tell you exactly what goes on the wall. And uh, right, sixteen mil drywall, both sides, a uh, f- um, floor to uh, one foot six above T bar ceiling. Okay, partition cavity uh, to be friction fit with sound uh, sound sound blankets. Whatever, it's bad. Okay, like this is weird weird wording. A little maybe a bit of a new uh, designer, but. Not too, not too bad. Okay, the more description, the better. Okay, you can't hurt. Uh, never hurts to have more description. Like that, partial height gable with dual swing door by equipment supplier uh, to be constructed of three and five eighths uh, steel stud uh, and sixteen inch centers, uh, five eighths plywood both sides, floor uh, to four foot four. Um, um, complete with three quarter inch uh, thick oak top. Uh, there's detail uh, tw- two on ID uh, 05. So detail two on page ID 05 uh, will have the detail for that. Okay. Yeah, just look in here. Actually, this could be ID two right here. This is ID 03. Hold on here. Uh, yeah what's this about id three yeah this looks like the detail here but let's just zoom in here there you go so it's funny right so you you just keep in mind too these these damn uh wall these section through right section through okay this is a type of of drawing you're gonna get right it's uh Oh, definitely a fraction, like fraction of the crime. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, the this is you're gonna go. This is gonna show you your three three quarter inch uh, solid quarter sawn oak top caps uh, with your blocking here. So uh, we we know that the um, they want uh, your wood blocking, your three quarter ply uh, on top of the steel, and then your drywall is gonna cover that. <clears throat> and then the oak cap is going to go straight out to the edges. Okay, that's all important to know when you're drywalling and uh, laying things out. Okay, uh, framing and drywalling, great. Right? You you want to you don't want to uh, drywall this and and then cut it off at the steel. You need to have the plywood on first because if you drywall just to the steel, then the cap's not going to match, right? Oh, so that's half inch plywood anyways. So that's that that isn't gonna matter. It's just that if that was drywall, that's how that would go. But if it's if it's plywood, it usually means something else is gonna go on top of it, right? Yeah, browse over your details. Boom, boom. This is great to know. Like you can see, there's tile up to five feet here, so you don't have to finish tape. Uh, you just got to do five feet and above in the ceiling, basically, right? Uh, but this also tells you where wood backing needs to be for the bars. Okay, all these bars need backing. This sink's gonna need backing. All right, that's the air machine. Your hand dryer is gonna need backing. This is your handicap bar layout. That's important for the backing part because it's a little bit different when you're uh, backing that sort of thing. Look at that. Uh, recessed electrical box galvanized provide uh, around opening acrylic latex sealant for fire stop, blah, blah, blah. Wherever that goes, you got to find out where that goes. But... Uh, yeah, so we're getting there, getting to the floor plans. But this is all stuff you want to look at before. This is a ceiling plan. Did I miss? I didn't miss the damn floor plan, did I? All right. Anyways, well, seeing that we're in the ceiling plan. All right. Though so you got drywall ceilings and T bar, basically. Okay. Like we go back into the kitchen area back here, all T bar. Okay. So this th- this wall here. 
okay? Uh, these walls here, none of them are fire rated, okay? So they're just going to go above T-bar, okay? Above T-bar by whatever, one foot six or whatever, okay? All of these walls above T-bar. That's it, okay? This wall right here, okay, same thing. It only has to go uh, so far up because you've got a bulkhead and a ceiling out front of it that can tie into it, okay? Uh, so basically, yeah, you got a bulkhead here, and uh, it ties into this wall. It'll be at different elevations, so you want to be aware of that. Okay, just find out where those damn, uh, damn bulkheads are. Okay, so I know how this goes because I've framed it already. But yeah, this, this bulkhead goes all the way around and, and returns into the back demising wall. And then there's a flat gypsum ceiling here. with uh, There's a, a return air location in there as well. But yeah, I, I never even seen it in there when I was done it. But if you go to here, this is your demising wall, okay? Demising wall demising wall so these here is your fire rating okay fire rated walls are these two dem demising walls now there will be a, that's why base building to basically uh, will cover all of the fire rating aspects okay so you don't really do a lot of it when you're doing your interior walls okay unless you're separating your an, like an electrical room or mechanical room or something like that which is still kind of rare okay this is an interior partition, uh, like a, this is a tenant type of improvement type job. <sighs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, I, it's not. So radiuses are not that like, I get it. Like you're going to have uh, certain points like or certain dimensions. Okay. With them. Um, but yeah, you, you just, you got to basically match them to certain points. And what we've done is basically when I'm doing <clears throat> my radiuses, I'm going to find the distance and I'll, and I'll just like screw a couple studs together. If I have to, I sometimes I've, I've put long, like long ass studs to, together to draw your radiuses. Okay. And you, you get one point to another and then you might have to change location because it waves in and out. But yeah, it's, uh, it, yeah, definitely I can show you that. That's a great idea. I should do that. I don't have any drawings though. I should find some sample drawings. I, I just use old drawings that I did jobs for. I haven't done a radius in forever, man. But yeah, you can see here there's a bul <clears throat> bulkhead here with some sort of wall. Bulkhead here. And this is funny too. It didn't even show the wall uh, attaching to this one either. But you got a, a wall here, but yeah, basically, yeah, you have no full height walls in this job. Basically, everything goes just above T-bar. So in a lot of these jobs, the, the everything on this outside after, like say this would go all the way up to deck and this would go all the way up to deck, there'll be no T-bar out here, okay? Only T-bar in the back. So this would be your full height like all the way to deck stuff right here that you have to, to frame and tape, like drywall and tape all the way up. And then everything in the back here, you only have to uh, drywall up to, uh, or just past ceiling height, right? Which is nice, nice, right? And in the backs of these kitchens, for example, most of it's FRP, you don't even have to tape it, right? What do we got? Yeah, so here's your uh, bulkhead detail right here. For that big perimeter bulkhead they want a one foot reveal basically okay uh with a with a six inch return so that inside the inside that little server area or, or like the thing okay it's just going up six inches and uh and then yeah you got a one foot re like reveal all the way around uh your three sides so you can kind of see where i'm talking about okay this this side here this is outside to where the customers are, okay? And this inside here is where the servers are, where they're taking your order. And you can see those squiggly lines there, okay? That means that, that they're shortening the distance between here and here, okay? That is, that's what those squiggly lines mean, right? You remember what I said at the beginning? Okay, yeah, sure. Uh, so right now, I'm, this is a, a bulkhead slash ceiling detail, right? So the, the bulkhead is the front part. So basically what a bulkhead is, it's, it's the something that hangs from the ceiling and it doesn't go down to the floor. 
it's a it's a part of the ceiling basically okay it's going to hide certain things or it's going to be a design feature okay there's also uh free floating ceiling parts we call clouds <clears throat> right that are that are even different from bulkheads but uh yeah and then your demising wall is what divides so this is going to be in like a cru building and uh there's going to be a neighbor on either side of this guy okay there's going to be a neighbor over here and a neighbor down down uh down here so these demising walls are your fire rated walls that separate um uh separate your uh your units okay and separate liability okay because the, then you got this is why it's double layer five eighths both sides it's six inch studs you know uh insulated because and it's fire cock top and bottom basically it's fire sealed fire proof right that's you don't want your one neighbor causing a fire and it's spreading to the uh, to the next right it want they want you want to contain a fire to, to each unit so that's why the demising walls are so heavily fire rated sort of like soffit so yeah soffits um yeah soffits same thing yeah basically yeah um you know soffits <clears throat> i always kind of like soffits are uh like see like little ceilings you know uh but yeah you uh like you know you know like outside like the house where the soffit is thinking about that but yeah there's all there's different soffit stuff like uh, you can uh frame uh uh i don't know it's it's hard to explain because it really and techni technically like this is a ceiling okay this is a ceiling and this is a bulkhead around it okay and, uh, this this is a one foot wide bulkhead and it and then this ceiling is six inches above it on the inside and then the t-bar is like a foot and a half above it on the outside so if you look back down here right uh whatever it doesn't it doesn't have an equal distance here but it'll tell you on your uh on your elevation so if we go here uh our elevation is 11 foot so the t-bar is at 11 foot this bulkhead ceiling is at or the ceiling is at nine foot six which means the bulkhead is at nine foot right so uh yeah so then there's a two foot reveal of the, on the outside for the t-bar okay but yeah soffits are different like kind of like you know when you're doing like a perimeter sort of thing um they could be inside, they could be outside, but they're smaller, you know, like uh, they're just smaller, but yeah. Like this is pretty, this job here would be really simple to lay out, right? So listen, a lot of guys, you what, what happens is you go, all right, we're going to go from the back or the front, right? Well, you got to find a number. This actually is a really good question. This is a really good, this, let me show you something here because this is actually a really good example. Let me find the actual damn floor plan for this because I know this job, the guy was like, what the hell, we always go from this side. I'm like, no, you don't. You always go from this side. Uh, these are more elevations and things, kind of good to get into when you're, when you're getting into the taping and staging and whatever. Yeah, like this was crazy. This, this stupid thing here is, it was everybody missed this until the very end. Um, this job, this job is the job I haven't got paid for yet. I still haven't gone over there. I just, uh, I got busy. I got, I got to get, get over there. Where the hell is the actual floor plan? Is there, is there no, maybe this is it. Maybe this is the floor plan. I guess this is the floor plan. Okay. So it's pretty straightforward. <clears throat> so let's just take a look here right so from the inside of this door okay you're gonna you go like this wall here is 15 foot half inch back from the inside of this door but you don't know if this exterior door is in the right spot right hey right on chris compton compton you know it man right on uh good to see you man good to see you so you don't you didn't do you did not frame this you don't know like there's no real like dimension to this point okay when you're dealing with something like this you got to be careful because there's equipment like i was saying you don't want to be you don't want to mess that up so there's a number though from the front right so three foot to this little knee wall and then you frame it and then there's a number what 40 foot one four and three quarter to this wall here okay so that's what I did. I went off of this front because going off the back, 
like this, okay? How the hell would you know the where exactly that door was supposed to be, right? Like that's a very untrustworthy number. So the and of course the the plumbers, I swear to god, they always go off the front wall and this time they went off the back wall, okay? So uh things didn't line up properly. Right? The plumbing and shit didn't line up. And I'm like, well, then they didn't put it in the right, they didn't put their shit in the right spot because I went off the, the, the front. Oh, well, we went off the back. Like, oh my God, like how stupid are you? Like, I'm sorry, I went off the front. And, and technically it doesn't matter which way you go off of. It should still land. But when you look at, <clears throat> when you're looking at your options and you say, okay, well, I got, I got a definite number from the front. I'm going with the front. Okay. I'm not going to trust where this this is supposed to be. If anything, this door is supposed to be put in after the fact, 15 foot half inch from this wall off the front. You know what I'm saying? So it's it's just it's the always, yeah, try to start from a solid point, exactly. Yeah. So what I would do, right, is I'm gonna come out uh, off this front wall I'm gonna make it. I'm gonna make uh, like I got. I got a tape that's uh, 40 feet long. Uh, so even still, even this is is a bit long. Okay. So what you want to do is you're gonna come out like say 10 feet, 20 feet, make a mark on both sides. So you want if you want to have a, some sort of uh, control line to get you there. Okay. Keep it an even number, and uh, like even here, right? You got eight foot six to the inside of this little knee wall here. Okay. So if you come out eight foot six here, make a mark. Okay, that's a nice square line. <clears throat> so from on that side, I'm gonna come out whatever the whatever the rest is to this wall because I know this has to line up. This yellow actually is a pretty shitty color. Let me uh, let me pick a different color. Maybe this. Okay, so we'll lay out we'll lay out this little guy here. Okay, and then whatever that is, we're gonna we're gonna match it here. And then we're going to come all the way back and make this mark for this wall. Okay. Just taking that number off of your, off of your overall. Okay. You know what I mean? Like just do some math. Okay. And then I'm going to make sure I, I come off and I'm, and I mark this side and then boom, this is my control line. This is where I take all my numbers from basically. Okay. I do this one wall that divides the front and the back. And then that sets me up for the rest. Okay, these little walls at the front are pretty easy. Like, look, you got three foot into the inside of this wall and you're coming out two foot nine and a half minus a half inch on the front. Okay, you're gonna come out two foot nine because you're gonna get a half inch of drywall on the front of that, if you know what I mean. Okay, so always be aware of your drywall. So for example, you're gonna go three foot to the drywall. Okay, so go three foot half inch to your steel. If you understand, okay? So if it says three foot to this wall, you gotta go three foot, half inch to the steel, and then three and five eighths over, okay? And then you can then you can take on your numbers. But be, be aware of, of your drywall, okay? So this this mark as well, that's why I like, I like measurements the best that go center to center. That's the best way, but <clears throat> it's not always gonna be center to center. Um, right? So you're going to go three foot, half inch to inside over three and five eighths to your other side of your steel, but you want to add another half inch for that drywall. Okay. And then you're going to go 40 foot one and three quarter over to the, to the drywall, add another half inch, right? So you're going to go 40 foot, uh, two and a quarter to the steel and then over three and five eighths. Okay. And then that's your mark for, uh, for this center wall here. And then it's pretty easy. Like you got yourself a knee wall here that goes around. Uh, let's see here. So yeah, you got this knee wall, like it's a half wall, it comes up four foot four all the way around here. There, there is a wall here, but it's lower. This is where the cash register goes. So it's kind of goes down a bit and then up, but there's elevations and details in these drawings that show you. But it's so simple, right? Once you got this middle wall, right? Now you're gonna go back 17-1 to the inside, okay? Add, a, add an inch, remember, for tight spaces like this, add an inch for equipment, who cares? Add one inch, go 17 foot two inches, okay? <clears throat> because, yeah, and then you go back here on this side, 17 foot two inches, 
make a mark, make a mark, and snap your lines, right? It's it's actually, you know, just getting it done that way. But finding finding ways to, to break up your job. So say you need to do like a, uh, for example, you need to do a control line or grid lines. Just know your grid lines are always, always, always. So right now, the grid line for this building is right in the middle of the demising wall, okay? Right in the middle of the demising wall is your control lines. So wherever there's a column, okay? So let's say there's a column here. There's gonna be a column right there because your, your grid line this way is gonna be center of this column, okay? That's how you divide your jobs up, okay? This is your grid lines. It will be center of column, center of column, center of column this way, so center of wall, center of wall. Those are your grid lines, okay? Your next column, say, is right here, in here, okay? This is a grid line, basically, okay? Grid line. But there will be no more grid lines in between. There's no grid lines inside this unit, okay? Your grid lines are hidden inside the wall and in between your columns going that way, okay? Unless you have a big unit and then you got a column here and a column here, then you got another grid line here, if you know what I mean, okay? But grid lines are always, always, always center of column because basically those columns follow the, all the way down into the ground to the piles, okay? And then your finish, like your zero, will be at the outside edge of your grade beams. So your grade beams go all the way around a building, okay? So this is your grade beam right here, okay? This is your grade beams here, boom, boom, okay? So right here on the outside of that grade beam is zero, okay? This is your, your steel, but that is zero right there, okay? And you're going inwards, inwards, okay? So that's how that's how your grid lines work. So grid lines on big jobs can be important, okay? So if you need to find a grid line, it's not that hard. It's se always center to column. Uh, you go from the outside of your grade beam, or, or even if the grade beam's on the inside of the building, go from the center, always center, 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 center column, center column, center of structure, okay? That's where your grid lines are. But yeah, you can just make control lines. Like I like I like to make this uh, this one first, okay? Because it's a straight across wall. You can tell right here. Look, there's a bulkhead here and a bulkhead here. There's no door <clears throat> here or there. So it's you 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 know for a fact that this is just a, a walk through opening that's going to have drywall return all the way around. So you're gonna have to corner bead and tape it all as well, okay? Maybe not so much this this one going into the kitchen because there might be FRP, but definitely this one you're going to have to tape, you know, four corners, right? Corner, 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 all the way around like an opening, an official opening, okay? Um, but yeah, then just work your way, uh, like I say, once you've got the, your, your, your main lines, kind of your, your job broken up, it's really simple, you know? Uh, you're going to go <clears throat> back here and maybe do this one here. Uh, like like lay out this wall Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna come off of the inside of this wall uh, To the outside of this one. Okay across Snap uh, make a mark and then you're gonna come down here same thing same distance make a mark and then and then snap the line for this wall you know uh, come in and then do this one and then you got the you got, like for this 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 one here, you're gonna just come off of this back wall, or this wall, whatever, the, whichever number the the measurement's coming from. Make, come off this side, make a mark here, come over this side up here, make a mark, and then snap this wall, and then you can kind of come off of this mark down, and uh, snap this wall. Right? It's pretty straightforward. You know, just gotta find a mark and just go lay out, lay, lay out crazy. Right? Uh, it's not that hard really you know you just got to kind of know your way around like lo like knowing where to put your marks and where the hash marks are okay uh knowing okay this is all half inch drywall so that makes it super easy but if you're say if you're in a job where you got double layer five eights um uh, half inch single layer five eights uh maybe you got um i don't know 
there, there, there's not much more difference than that, but you know, like uh, there be, there might be two and a half inch walls, inch and five eighths, six inch, three and five. Like you got to be aware of the wall type, each wall that you're laying out, and make sure you know uh, if you have to. Okay, what I do is, as in, in a lot of jobs, I'll take a, I'll take a like a highlighters, different colors, and I'll give each wall type a, a color. Of highlighter and I just highlight those walls and that color so when I'm laying it out I know okay this is six inch or you know uh, three and five whatever okay and um, I'll also know the wall types so it's gonna be double air or whatever okay just because this is a small job it's just simple for me to explain with but you can you can take that one to the bank and lay out huge jobs it's not gonna be it's not gonna be much different right Hey, right on, Francisco. Thanks for the subscribe, man. Right on. And it's just simple like that, right? Like, it's not too hard. You just got to really get yourself familiar with the with the wall types and, um, and uh, like, just the, the, the symbols on the drawings and that. But it, and, and not worry too much. Like, you, if it's good to, <clears throat> to, to go get yourself fresh, like, uh, look over the, the ceiling, <clears throat> excuse me, the ceiling plan, equipment plan, um, knowing the door schedule, uh, sometimes it's good if you're not the guy installing the door frames to just go to the general contractor and be like, yo man, I want all your ROs that you want. Okay. And, and write them down between beside each door opening. So I, where you want my steel to be, you need to tell me where you want my steel to be. Okay. And that's okay. General contractors will not mind doing that. Not a single one will mind. They'll love it because they know it's going to be right. Okay. If you like, dude, it's all good. So I work at a small company and work right next to the foreman. He's teaching me a lot every day. And I'm so thankful I got lucky to find great teachers for the union. Yeah, right on. No, that's excellent. Um, I was uh, really lucky to have good installer teachers but I, I i taught myself blueprints i taught myself all this stuff because you know um I, I did go to school but I, I already knew it before i went to school okay like uh i mean not not like the specifications like really i learned in school maybe but uh i i just everything yeah it, it's all played a part but yeah i didn't have definitely had a guy actually the first company that i worked for out of sat me down and showed me specifications he this guy was wonderful he was awesome he was a uh, a coordinator like project manager uh for this company and he was great he showed me how to write a proper quote and use the estimate sheet and the guy was amazing and i really enjoyed working with him uh we did we had a really crappy manager she was awful at her job and uh yeah she she yeah she just gave me such a hard time and yeah it was too bad because yeah i was that we would have kicked some butt if i stayed at that job yeah, uh, but yeah, she was sleeping with the big boss and that was a whole mess and oh my god Like she was useless useless and she hated my guts. She hated my guts. She thought I was gunning for her job, right? But I just wanted to work together and yeah, she was just she was awful Just not 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 made for the like our business. That's for sure <clears throat> That's wonderful. That is actually great Chris. I love hearing that. Yeah, no, it's good. It's good. Uh, I like guys that train guys. It's so it's important, you know. I don't know if I can look at some other drawings I got. Oh yeah, this is the Grand Prairie one. But yeah, you can see they come in all shapes and sizes. But like you can see here, this one here shows you <clears throat> your fire plan. So. Right, two hour fire demising wall, okay? And then <clears throat> your exterior walls are back here. You got your mechanical room back here. So I, I ended up framing from the mechanical room to the front anyways, this demising wall in this job, okay? Cause it wasn't done. And uh, yeah, you guys can, I can show you videos of that too. But uh, you can see, you can start to see sometimes this equipment is tight, it's really tight, right? But yeah, bulkhead, bulkhead. Like last big bulkhead, like, you know, oh yeah, there, see, look, see, that's how you, this is more typical of how the walls are shown, right? You got your W1. So if it says a W, that means wall, which is an exterior wall, okay? P1, 
uh, P2 as a partition. Partitions are interior walls, right? Hey, right on. No, that's great, Chris. <laughs> right on, dude. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, I just, uh, I like to teach guys because I want, I want you guys to be more, I want to help. Uh, I knew it was hard for me to learn. Like, you know, I, I mean, I, I was really left to my own devices a lot, like, you know, left on my own a lot. And, uh, I figured out a lot of stuff, made a lot of mistakes. Um, but yeah, it was just yeah. Was, I didn't like how it went. It went so yeah. I like I like teaching people. I really do. I like helping and be, helping you guys. The more you know about this stuff, the more the more you're gonna be worth. The more it, like you can protect yourselves and all that good stuff. But you can see right here. So this is a bulkhead ceiling here. So if you look down here, okay, this is gonna be all exposed out here. So you're gonna have to uh, tape and drywall all the way up. Uh, to finish to for paint out here okay so <clears throat> this is a bulkhead you're gonna have to draw up a bulkhead all the way here and and then this is a wall that closes it off i think there's an opening here like an opening here actually so there's a wall here a little bit of a wall here and then there's a walkthrough opening there uh, but this is such a mess my drawing so let me just delete this for a second pick a better color and uh, you can tell me, so this is where your bulkhead's gonna go, all the way on this perimeter, okay? This is your bulkhead, it's gonna tie into this wall. So I'm kinda just kinda showing you here, like your three and five eighths bulkhead, right? You're gonna drop that bulkhead all the way here. There's a walkway back here, so you don't have to do a bulkhead in the back, okay? It's just a ceiling now. The inside is just a ceiling. You just return it into this back wall, there's going to be a bulkhead across here, but yeah, it'll just pick up your ceiling. It'll be at like seven foot, uh, just like, you know, just a little bit higher than a doorway or whatever, maybe eight foot. And then this bulkhead here is at nine foot, right? This whole bulkhead ceiling is flat and it goes in the, so the bulkhead drops to nine feet. And then, so the ceiling is also nine feet. So it's like a, like a soffit bulkhead type thing, right? And your windows here at the front, it's uh, it's also you can tell here. There's a there's a when you're when you're bidding these jobs, you want to look at these big windows because you want to know uh, that you're gonna put in a you're gonna put in a thing on your price when um, uh, when when you uh, when you submit your price to this right that you're not gonna do anything to the existing like the demising walls. Or the like the exterior walls, okay? You're only pricing interior partitions, okay? So if these walls aren't finished and the windows aren't finished, that's all an extra, okay? And if the guy comes back to you and sell, tells you, oh no no, they're not they're not taped, they're not uh, they're not even drywalled or something, you never know. But <clears throat> sometimes they'll be partially drywalled. Sometimes they'll be they should technically be fully drywalled and taped perfectly. Okay, and then all you're doing is touch-ups when you're doing tape. My son's doing fantastic, actually. Yeah, he's he's busy. Uh, him and his band just recorded a demo, and uh, I'm like bugging him, like guys, like let's shoot. I'll help you guys. You guys use all my equipment if you want. We'll shoot a, a video if you want or whatever. But yeah, he's doing good. He just helped me on my last job. We just finished a, a drywall taping job, and uh, he was helping me on the weekends. He's good. Yeah, he's studying hard. He's doing really good. He's got really good marks in school, so I'm happy. Yeah. But yeah, he's, he's, he's excited. He wants to start his apprenticeship in uh, electrical as soon as he's done high school. But uh, yeah, these glazing walls, like you can see this dashed, these dashed lines, you got to watch out for on blueprints, right? Because that means something. And when you see it dashed line between these build, like between the wall like that, and then this glazing, you know it's a drywall return all the way around the window. There's a drywall return. So that's expensive, okay? So uh, I, I charge $500 to finish every window, okay? 500 bucks minimum, depending on how big it is. But yeah, that's 500 bucks right there if you miss that, okay? And then this here, same thing. This is a glazing into the, into the existing door. Like this is a door, it's a aluminum door. And there's a drywall return in the door as well, okay? That also, uh, is is three sides you got a, you got tear away on the inside corner bead on the outside that's a lot of work to finish okay 
So, you know, you gotta, you gotta price that crap accordingly. And if you show up on site and it's like, oh man, I, I didn't put any ex exclusions in the, in my price, the guy could come after you, right? You Maybe, you know? So you need to say when you're pricing, I'm only pricing interior work, like partitions. I'm only pricing the partitions, ceilings, bulkheads, right? Or whatever else you're pricing. But you're, you're not, you know, I'm excluding uh, the demise. Look, so I was just telling you guys, here's a grid line. Here, grid line B. Okay, center to column, center to column. There's always the column, column, okay? And then grid line uh, uh, 10. So one way it will be numbers and one way it will be letters, okay? So it, grid line A right there, you see that? There's a column. It's uh, center to column, always center to column, yeah. So there you go. <clears throat> center to center. Sometimes... The, like the outside one will be on the outside of the grade beam. Uh, but if there's a column right there, then yeah, you're going center to columns, always center to columns because those, like I'm telling you, columns follow all the way into the ground and uh, that's where the piles are, okay? But that's weird. So there's a grid line just outside the building and then it looks like there's another set of columns on the inside. So yeah, just watch out for that. But, you know, look at that. So 10 right center of that demising wall right there. Okay, right to center. But then there's grid line B, and then C is at the back here. And yeah, so grid line C is going on the on that inside set of columns, right? So that's nice that they show you there. But it's, see, it's not that hard. It's not that hard to find a control line or 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 what that. But yeah, look, reflected ceiling notes, uh, key notes. It's all kind of nice. It's all good. Like you see that. Right there, install a new gypsum board bulkhead, seven foot AFF. Uh, so number five, I bet you I can tell you right now it's going to be in between one of those, uh, like it'll be here or here. Uh, let me let me let me go up to the floor plan. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so so check this out. So yeah, okay. Okay, yeah, this is good to know. So uh, right here, you can see this wall kind of comes along and goes in this way. Well, this is the dotted line, right, as well. But you you know there's going to be a bulkhead from here to this wall, okay? So between here, there's a bulkhead. That's where that's what it is on, on this job, I remember now. And that that is open. And I think this actually... The ceiling is outside here. So the ceiling actually comes, it, it ties in out here more and the ceiling kind of comes out like this. If I if I remember correctly, the counter is a little bit inside, right? And the bulkhead comes out a bit, if I remember correctly, and it ties into the wall here somewhere. But you're gonna need to tie that ceiling in somehow, right? Oh. So you you want a bulkhead here, okay? So the wall, the wall terminates and goes, oh, what the hell am I doing here? But yeah, you're going to have to build a bulkhead along here between this side and this side, okay? Right there, right? And that'll pick up the ceiling. You got your wall on this side and your wall on this side, okay? So your full height wall will be here, and then you're going to go all the way up and finish. So this is all your finish taping out here, okay? And then your ceiling here as well will get finish taped. Right on, dudes. No, that's cool, man. Yeah, that's cool. But yeah, uh, let's, uh, like if I just jump back to, you, just so you can see, we're going to go back to the ceiling here. Right there. Yeah. Oh, it just ties in right to the corner here, I guess. And then that's a bulkhead. Yeah, actually it shows the bulkhead, which is, which is nice. Sometimes they don't. They just show like some stupid dash line or whatever. But yeah, you can see the bulkhead clearly in, in this drawing here. But you don't want to miss it. But just between these two marks. Holy shit, that's a big mark. Yeah, when you get in that workflow. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> and T-bar too, like when you're when you're laying out T-bar, basically you just you can see they got equal distances on 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 each side, okay? Looks like you got a, a two foot uh two foot coming off of this long wall here, okay? So you just you're just gonna lay out your 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 two foot centers this way, 
and then you can you just want to find somewhere like a joint like a main like this one right here this long one here and uh this one here maybe i don't know it's it's a little weird but maybe here is where you want to start you know and then yeah it's simple you use that cross laser and you shoot a laser straight down your one line and you get that line in nice and secure and then each one just kind of falls into place okay i got a whole video on laying out t-bar and then yeah this is your bulkhead here oh you're drilling into the into the deck now so like the q deck Oh yeah, walk-in cooler. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> that's interesting. That is interesting. There's a weird line around that. Walk-in cooler below. That is interesting. Huh. I don't know what this is about here. I'm I'm just wondering. I don't know what's going on with that uh, walk-in cooler. So there's that's the cooler, because I remember framing this. We just built the walls. We didn't have any sort of ceiling or anything. It doesn't look like it needs it, unless that's just like the stupid. Yeah, there's no detail around that. That's ridiculous. Yeah, and then the hot water tank. So, uh, uh, right on, Alex. This uh, hot water tank, guys, I built it exactly to the drawing, and the guy charged me. This is what he he why he won't pay me is because he it didn't work. But I built it exactly to this drawing. And, and, it, and, uh, because it didn't work, the guy didn't, didn't pay me for the whole fucking, like, not for the whole job, but the whole repair, he charged me for the whole repair and then some, uh, he ended up built, he ended up charging me over three grand, like, like 3,500 bucks because of that. It was such bullshit. Um, a scumbag, I'm trying to get the money out of him, but he's a, he's a piece of crap. He's a cheap bastard. A cheap bastard. Fucking crook. But yeah, that's that's basically it, guys. I I mean, it's not it's it's not like uh, you know, it's not too hard. Like you just gotta like I'm saying, just watch the hash marks, know your wall types, know your ceiling types, get familiar with it. You know, start small and and work your way up. Like uh, uh, try to try to take some initiative, lay some lay get some stuff laid out, right? Um, and and yeah practice baby exactly yeah and just practice 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 that's it yeah no uh and 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 then you get so good at it and and it's really nice too when you get good at the laying out and understanding everything and it, it out really that's where you start learning the pricing and the linear footage and like the you know like it just you just grow from there you know um but yeah if you guys have trouble you guys can always ask me questions no problem you guys can email me your questions. You could leave me comments on YouTube, whatever you want. So, yeah, I guess, yeah, when you screw up on layout, it really does suck. I'm not going to lie. Um, it really sucks. And, and, and some of the things you really want to watch out for is like, um, if, if, uh, <clears throat> if, if, for example, uh, you're, there's a wall that, that runs like, you know, like there's a long wall and then it jogs in a little bit and goes forward. Okay. And you're kind of, you're laying out one way and, um, like it, like some jobs are a mess. Okay. You're going to have like a stack of drywall in your way. You're going to have this piece of equipment in your way and you're this in your way. You really got to just pay attention that your lines are square. Okay. So when you're when you're laying out a hallway, for example, that's close to a wall, but you can't go off of this wall for some reason, and you're going off the long way, do a quick check, you know, like kind of check and, and see if it's square. Like, yeah, it's just oh man, some <clears throat> some silly mistakes can happen. Uh, but um, 
you you got to uh, like all, pay attention to like if if you know the all the toilets are running along one side, okay, that's always going to be like a six inch wall, okay. The so check out check your uh, wall types, make sure you're getting your your sizes right, like your six inch walls right, and your three and five, and this and that, okay. Double check, yeah, just double check. Um, and we we always do like a like a another check as well. Like it's good to do. Like after the framing is done, like you, you should know too, when there's plumbing and stuff like in ground stuff and it's not lining up to your, to your layout, something may be off. Most of the time it's because the plumbers didn't lay it out right or the, or the electricians didn't lay it out right. And so you got to adjust your wall to match their core, like the holes or the, like the in ground stuff. If you can, because, but you can't always change things. Okay. Because if you change something, then another piece of equipment won't fit, and this won't fit, and blah blah blah. Okay, um, it's in 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 that case, you just lay it out as it is on the drawings. But um, to kind of just be a cowboy and go ahead and just lay everything out to the drawings, ignore everything that's coming out of the ground, and this and that, it's a little irresponsible. <clears throat> okay, you want to try to make sure everything fits in the walls. Okay, and then when it doesn't. That's when you, you do the layout to the drawing and you tell, uh, like if you can't get it to fit in, in the wall, okay, because it's going to conflict with something else, that's when you just lay it out to the drawing and you tell the general or your boss or whatever, listen, man, I laid it out to the drawing. I tried to adjust so that this drain or line or whatever could fit in it, but if I did that, <clears throat> it's going to conflict with that. You got to be careful, like you just, just tell them. So then sometimes they'll have to come and bang out concrete and replace the in-ground and this and that. You never know, right? Yeah, right on. <clears throat> I, I, yeah, hiring a professional is, is a smart idea. That's how you, that's the way you get your job done right, okay? Uh, it's really hard when you're not a construction person to properly vet construction people. Uh, you know, like anybody can start a construction company. Anybody can. Okay. And you gotta, you gotta be careful. You just gotta, it's, it's just such a crap, crap show out there. Um, you, you know, the people you hire need to have some sort of portfolio or history, you know, like, you know, that's the nice thing about me and my, I have a whole YouTube channel. You can go back and look at all my work. You can, you know, um, you can tell, right. <clears throat> Yeah, I lay I lay every, I lay everything out with uh, chalk line first, right? And uh, yeah, I use an, a nice uh, like a um, oh shit. There's so when you got when when you're when when you're using chalk, guys. There's a uh, there's numbers, okay, on your chalk. I think one to five, <clears throat> and that'll that'll be like your transparency or your longevity of the of the line, okay. I think the higher the number, the longer it'll stay and harder it is to erase. If I remember correctly, um, so I'm thinking four or five is mostly what I use when I'm uh, when I'm snapping on concrete, and then I'll use like a one, uh, like a blue one when I'm when I'm snapping lines on onto drywall. Uh, hey, me again. What's up, buddy? <clears throat> yeah, RFIs. So uh, an RFI is a request re request for information. And you can requ you can uh, tell your foreman, or if you're the foreman, you can put an RFI in and uh, and ask questions. It's it's pretty it's pretty straightforward. Um, any manager should know how to do that. Uh, sometimes it's just a matter of making a phone call or something. Okay, but uh, um, yeah, like if if you know it's just like a stupid mistake that the the guys who did the in ground or like the coring uh, messed up the layout they're just going to have to fix it okay if if it's in the wrong spot and you can't adjust because it'll conflict with something else they just going to have to fix it okay but as a wall builder it's your job to make sure you do your best to make sure everything fits okay but remember if you adjust something uh to make something fit okay to um to remember that that's not the skin. If you're taking numbers off of that wall, you just changed. Okay. You can't change everything. Okay. You just want to change that one wall. Okay. So what you can do is snap, uh, snap a line where it was supposed to be with a different color. Okay. And then take your numbers off of that line. You know what I mean? And, uh, sort of thing. Okay. Just remember that, you know, you make changes to something 
then yeah chalk first and then i track it all out yes yeah yeah so i go around and, and on these jobs here because they're not they're, like most of the time i uh uh if 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 i'm using i have to use a scissor lift to get up high i'll 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 do top track first sometimes okay uh but if these if it's just free height walls that don't go all the way to deck I bang in all the bottom track first, and then I copy it the, uh, with the top track, uh, it's standard track to standard track, um, and uh, yeah, simple as that, right? And then you just, you don't even have to cut the studs with those, right? Those those not full height walls, just go all twelve foot studs or all ten foot studs, whatever, right? It's pretty easy.